In 2021, the Magic Kingdom at Walt Disney World was visited by over 12 million people, making it the most visited amusement park worldwide. In fact, an average of 250,000 guests travel daily to and from the various Disney World properties via the 400 plus buses, 12 monorail trains, and an entire fleet of water taxis and boats owned by Disney. The monorail system alone has had an average of 150,000 daily riders and since its opening in 1971 Walt Disney World monorail trains have registered enough miles to make 30 round trips to the moon. All of these are great options for transportation to and around Walt Disney World however Walt Disney originally had a much more luxurious option in mind when building his new Florida project. In this episode of Wheel of Attractions we're going to be taking a look at the abandoned Walt Disney World Airport. There's enough land here to hold all the ideas and plans we could possibly imagine. Right now our plans include an airport of the future down here in Osceola County. An entrance complex where all visitors will enter Disney World. An industrial park area covering about 1,000 acres. And of course the theme park area way up here. Walt Disney World Airport, also known as Lake Buena Vista Airport, also known as Lake Buena Vista Stoleport, is a former small airfield owned and once operated by the Walt Disney Company. Located just east of the former Walt Disney World Speedway in Bay Lake, it once accommodated smaller commuter airplanes which were able to perform stall operations. But what does stall mean anyway? STALL is an acronym for short, takeoff and landing. Essentially it is an airstrip that can accommodate a fixed wing aircraft that has short runway requirements for takeoff and landing. A STALL port, like the one that was once in operation at Walt Disney World, is an airport designed with short takeoff and landing operations in mind. Lake Buena Vista Airport was built in 1971 to serve as another option for guests and employees to get to Walt Disney World. Shawnee Airlines, a private commuter service, used the airport the most. They used to run seven flights daily out of Orlando's McCoy Jetport, now known as the Orlando International Airport. They would take newly arrived tourists on a 15 minute flight over to Walt Disney World and then turn right back around returning with the guests who were leaving the resort. It acted as a sort of air taxi service for those tourists who had a little bit too much cash to burn. By 1976 the Imagineers had hoped that 400 people would have jobs at the Walt Disney World Airport. Of course, 15 years later, after a full build out of the Florida project, they wanted the Jetport to be doing much better than that. Disney envisioned that by 1991 the airport would employ 2,000 people and that in the immediate area surrounding the Jetport at least 500 motels would provide rooms for travel travelers flying in and out of the Lake Buena Vista area. Delta Airlines has been chosen the new official airline of Walt Disney World. But over the years, less and less pilots actually wanted to fly into Lake Buena Vista Airport. For some reason, Disney never put money into the infrastructure of the airport. They didn't really build any usable hangars, which meant that pilots had to leave their airplanes exposed to all of the elements of Central Florida. For those of us who have spent hurricane season in Florida, or even just watched as the afternoon showers come down, we know how detrimental that could be for the conditions conditions of an aeroplane. But why? Why did Disney suddenly decide to stop putting money into the Lake Buena Vista Airport project? Some theories suggest that it has a lot to do with the high gas prices which grew during the famous oil embargo of 1973. At that time, President Richard Nixon requested Congress to approve a $2.2 billion fund to support Israel in the 1973 Arab-Israeli War. As a result, members of the Organization of 
Arab petroleum exporting countries took action by cutting production of oil and placing an embargo on oil exports to the United States. Back at the Disney offices, executives were so spooked by the idea of building anything that relied heavily on a steady stream of fuel in order to operate, they completely abandoned all future plans for the airport. The final nail in the coffin for the Walt Disney World Airport was the construction of the Epcot monorail line that takes guests from the Ticket and Transportation Centre to Epcot. Once the construction of the monorail extension to Epcot Centre got underway in the late 1970s, safe regular operation of the Lake Buena Vista stall port became impossible. Given the runway's physical orientation, planes attempting to land on the airstrip would have to fly in from the southwest, directly over the Epcot monorail beam. Disney lawyers had a meltdown thinking about sending a private plane directly into a trainload of tourists. By the 1980s, the Disney company no longer allowed anyone to land a plane at Lake Buena Vista Stallport. In fact, when Walt Disney's own private plane, Mickey Mouse 1, was being flown in so that it could go on display at Disney's MGM Studios, the plane couldn't get clearance to land at the airfield. Disney had to shut down traffic on World Drive, the road that leads to the Magic Kingdom, to be able to safely land the plane there and transport it to the park. And so the airstrip sat abandoned for years. That is, until a group of Imagineers got a clever idea for an experiment. For a brief time in the 1990s, Walt Disney Imagineering used the strip to test the idea of musical roads. If you raise different areas of asphalt along a roadway at very specific intervals, drivers who were travelling over it could hear vibrations that resonated inside their vehicle. Thus playing a melody. Test users would roll down the runway at certain speeds and hear the opening bars of zippity doo -da and When You Wish Upon a Star. But the experiment was short-lived and the grooves were officially removed in 2008. Today the airstrip sits abandoned and run down. In fact, I don't think there's any way that an airplane would be able to even perform an emergency landing there safely. The road has broken up quite a bit over the years and there are usually a lot of trucks and other construction vehicles parked on the landing strip. Eventually, in the wake of 9-11, the Disney company was awarded a special status that would kill the idea of ever having an active airport at Walt Disney World again. The entire Walt Disney World property became a no-fly zone, which itself is a story for another episode. If you enjoyed this video and would like to hear about another lesser known abandoned project at Walt Disney World, watch this video next to learn about a secret wave pool at Walt Disney World that not many people know about. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.